Hi there fellow guitarists, my name is Josh Rogers, welcome to MBN Guitar. In this tutorial I'm going to be explaining to you and giving you a few tips on bar chords. The reason I'm making this tutorial is that so many requests or comments on the channel have been about bar chords. And uh, I remember myself years and years ago when I was first confronted with bar chords and uh, I actually I thought they were impossible. You know, it's interesting what your perspective is uh, at various stages of your guitar playing. When you're at college or high school or school, there's usually that always one, one guy or one girl that's like you all admire and you think, wow, how do they even do what they're doing? And I remember in the early days, uh, there was a guy at our school called Stephen Lewis and he was probably like the only one at school, or it seemed like he was the only one at school that could play bar chords. And we all tried them and just thought, like, how is this even possible? We thought it was all about strength and uh, he was actually quite a big guy so we thought oh it must be all his strength and stuff and he just manhandles that guitar. It's not really about your actual physical size, it's really about technique. And not just technique but also a couple of things that you can do to your guitar and strings uh, that can also make the playing of bar chords much easier. So before we get into it, just in case you don't know what a bar chord is, it's basically just this finger here replacing the nut. So it's just sort of like this, you've got your nut here and a bar chord just means you're placing your finger across pretty much all the strings, not always, I'll get into a little bit of detail. It's like you're moving this nut along here. So let's just take a, an example, A minor chord. It's an A minor chord. I'm using these fingers because I'm just going to show you what the bar chord does. So we've got that, and if we bring it along one fret and then lay this down strings and so on and so on. Essentially what we're doing is taking this A minor chord and just playing it higher and higher and higher. So we've got A minor, B flat minor, B minor, C minor and so on and so on and so on. That's what bar chords are. Placing this finger and making it a bar. So we have three types of bar chords that are used most common in all kinds of guitar playing. The first one is a full bar. All six strings are barred by the first finger. The next one is a partial bar, and that's where your finger rests across less than six strings. It could be five, four, three, or even as few as two strings. The last one, which a lot of players are actually unaware of, is called a hinge bar. Basically what that is, and I have explained this in a few other videos, is where this part of your finger is just resting here like this, and it's not actually coming down to form a bar until some later point. And usually what it saves is doing something like this. So for example if we had this, and then this, instead of going, which is quite a, uh, quite a big move, you can prepare it like this, which is the hinge, and then you kind of move the hinge, or you take advantage of that hinge. There. All right. That's basically it. Those are your three types. Full bar, partial bar, hinge bar. Let's move on. Just dissect some technical things that can help you actually play bar chords a lot better or with a lot less effort. Let's put it like that. So for a full bar, what you'll find is that you actually very rarely need to place pressure across all six of those strings because you hardly ever come across this in guitar. That type of chord. And usually these fingers are always involved somehow. It could be something like this. Or perhaps. Let's look at this example. Uh, I started with uh, Sonatina by Toroba. So there's a lot of different types of bar chords going on in here. So it starts with a full bar. Now this is an A major chord actually. So you may see here that I've got, I'm using all four fingers. These three are actually in a classic E major shape, just moved up five to A major. Therefore, my bar only really requires me to have pressure on the sixth string, second string, and first, because these three fingers are doing the notes on five, four, and three. What that means is I can actually play with a curve in this index finger, and if you know some stuff about uh, architecture and that, a curve has quite a lot of strength in it. I think it has more strength in that uh, than a straight line. This curve, you know, you see it in the top of 
uh, doorways, old school doorways, and that they always have this kind of arch or a curve, and there's a lot of strength in that. And the same can be said when you're doing a bar chord. So in that, I'm not actually putting pressure across all six strings because I don't need to. These three are taking care of five, four, and three, and this bar is really curved and only taking care of a six, two, and one. So bearing that in mind, you can try applying that principle, curving your index finger and only applying pressure where it needs to be, especially if these fingers are already doing something. Okay, so bear that in mind, curve your finger. Another one, and this is never obvious unless it's explained, and that is to let your elbow do the bar. So what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that there's a lot of weight in this part of your arm. And when you're playing the guitar, for the most part, your elbow should actually be pointing down to the ground. And why is that? It's because you can take advantage of all the weight that is in there and let gravity assist you with the bar chord. So what you're doing here, you've got your curve. And the way I try to do it, I try to visualize it in my head that all the weight of my arm is like, ugh, and it's coming out through here. So I'm, I'm taking advantage of all the weight in my arm and directing it down through my elbow towards the ground. So I just hang on like this. I place the bar and then I let that weight come on. And you'll be amazed at how much that can assist you with doing a bar chord. Because most of the time, and I know this for a fact because I used to do it, and I know most players do this. I've got a lot of friends and we've all discussed bar chords and that. And we tend to, to try to grip like this. And what happens is most of us tend to get tired in here, in this part of the palm, and also like the forearm starts to ache. That's a common complaint. Don't think you're alone. Most guitarists have this. They start to get sore in here and sore in here. Now, don't get me wrong. That happens anyway, even if you've got really good technique. Some pieces are just uh, like a master class in endurance. It's like going to the gym. You can lift heaps, but there comes a point, no matter how good your technique or whatever, you're going to get tired. It's just normal. It's the, that buildup of lactic acid. But what we're trying to do here is just actually remove that or limit that or minimize that as much as possible. So just try that. When you put your bar on, do that, and then just kind of relax like this. This is how I do it. And imagine that all the weight of everything here and your shoulders relaxed is going out through your elbow. And you'll find all you kind of really have to do is just grip the guitar kind of softly and that weight will do a lot for you. Okay, one of the next things is to determine whether or not you actually need a full bar or not. So let's look at this example here. There we absolutely, we need a full bar. Sometimes it'll be obvious that you don't need one. Let's look at the partial bar here. We have that partial bar. I'm just going to show you through an example of Capriccio Ara. There's this section here. So let's just have a look at this here. You may think, uh, do I need to do a full bar across this? And in, in fact you could. A lot of players do. But you could also do this. Which doesn't actually require a bar chord at all. You don't need this do we have here this F to be sustained because it's got this kind of feel to it not so we're not sustaining this F that kind of thing so just work out like if you need a full bar or not Sometimes you do, like you can't escape it and you have to play the full bar. Maybe you need to sustain the bass note or a treble note or something like that. And you've got to keep that, that bar uh, applied with pressure all the time. But other times, you may be able to get away with it. Or not even get away with it, you may be able to use better technique. And better technique is not always about getting the right notes at the right time. Sometimes it's about not applying pressure when you don't need to. 
or getting something ready in advance or there's so many facets to technique but just be aware of that as well do I actually need to do a bar chord here or can I sort of play this in another way and I don't need a bar chord there's a lot of instances like that where you just get sort of caught up in playing a bar chord and you just don't really need to even if you're playing pop music you'd be surprised there's a lot of songs out there they, they don't just constantly run bar chords uh, why? because most guitarists know that it's extremely difficult to play bar chords for much longer than a few minutes I play a lot of pop music in my job as a full-time guitar player and I can tell you even though I've been playing for years and years and years there are some songs that just really push my endurance to the limit even though I'm trying to use all the techniques that I've just mentioned but anyway uh, I hope you you have a good understanding of where I'm coming from and what I'm trying to explain. So the next thing is your guitar and your strings. So what can you do on your guitar, or to your guitar I should say, that can help make bar chords or facilitate the playing of bar chords in a more easy way? Of course the first one that you can do is lower the action. If you don't know what action is, it's just the height of your strings from the fretboard i.e. how far it is or the distance from your string down to there. On a classical guitar you're quite limited with your choices. You can really only lower the height of this nut or lower the height of this nut. You can do both but you do have to be kind of careful. If you take it too low it may be really easy to play but your guitar might also sound horrible. It might be... It doesn't really happen on this guitar because my action is really high but sometimes you'll play that and you'll hear that bzzz kind of, that kind of sound. Sometimes you hear it when guitar, guitarists play really loud and you'll hear that buzz. It's because they're setting the string vibrating so widely that it just, it just starts connecting with the frets and you get that buzzing sound. So what you're, what you're actually hunting for is the perfect balance between ultimate playability but minimal buzzing on your guitar. You can start by taking those down. If you're not confident to do it, just take it to a luthier. You're going to have to pay a few bucks for them to do it, but it could be like one of the best investments that you make in your guitar. The second thing that you can do is adjust the truss rod. My guitar has one. probably can't see it, but there's a truss rod in there. If you don't know what a truss rod is, it's a rod that runs in your neck, actually. It's routed out, and then they put the fretboard on top and usually you can either adjust it here or from in here. Electric guitars sometimes it, you can adjust it both ends but with this classical guitar it's through here and you use an Allen key. Not all classical guitars, actually I think the majority of them do not have it. More modern guitar luthiers have been incorporating them into their designs because they understand that people are changing their strings, their brands more often and that some more adjustment is actually a good thing to have a nice option. It's better to have that option than to not have it. Anyway, what the truss rod does is it changes the relief of the neck. Now, what is the relief of the neck? The relief of the neck is the curvature. A bit like this, like I was explaining before. Your neck is actually curved. Or it can be, sometimes it can be straight, but usually there's always a slight curve in there. And that's called the relief. It's related to the action, but it is not the action. So you can adjust the amount of curve in there. You would want to do that depending on like, the tension of strings that you're using or perhaps your guitar got hot and cold and the neck kind of bent too much. Obviously if you're going to use high tension strings it's going to pull on the neck and the neck is going to curve. You may not want that. If it curves like that then the action is going to lift. Therefore if you're going to play high tension strings and it's starting to pull your neck or bow it more then you're going to need to straighten out that truss rod. And the, the idea there, or the saying is righty tighty, lefty loosey for adjusting the truss rod. A lot of people are quite scared to do it, uh, but I think it's fine. You should just attempt it uh, if you've got a guitar. Maybe if it's thousands and thousands of dollars, you might not want to do that. But generally, uh, you just take a quarter of a turn, either direction, whichever one you need to do. Just wait for your guitar to settle in for a few hours or 24 hours, come back, have a play, have a look, and just see how it feels. And if it's if it's worked, then hey, congratulations, you've learned how to adjust your guitar. Uh, but if not, then you might need to give it another quarter turn. Once again, I'm not saying do it. If you're not confident, take it to a luthier. It's not going to cost a fortune, 
and just like adjusting the, the height of the nut, it could be one of the best things that you've ever done for, your, for the playability of your guitar. Lastly, there's the strings. In classical guitar, we don't really talk about the gauge of the string. It's the tension. So you've generally got high tension, medium tension, and low tension. They each have their own pros and cons. High tension, they tend to sound really punchy, but the sustain isn't so good. Low tension strings, it's pretty much the opposite. Not so much volume, but usually a lot of sustain. And of course medium tension, as you would expect, it's kind of a middle ground. Some good attack and also some decent sustain. Each player has their own idea of what strings suit them. I personally use high tension strings, that's just me. Uh, for you, uh, it could be low tension might be better. Obviously with low tension strings, you're not going to require as much downforce, you're not going to have to apply as much pressure to achieve that sound. But that's something that you need to experiment with on your own. As are all of these things, you just experiment, try to apply what I've, what I've suggested. If it comes to actually adjusting your guitar, like I've said, you can attempt it yourself or take it to a luthier. Uh, that just depends on kind of how techy and hands-on you are. Some guitarists I know, they're professional guitarists, they never touch their guitars themselves. They always get somebody else to do it. Me, I always adjust my own guitars. It's just how I am. I was kind of brought up in a, a really remote location in, in New Zealand and we just had to do it. I had no choice. There was no luthiers even close to where I lived. So I just learned through trial and error. I had cheap guitars back then. Well, they were my only guitars anyway, but I, I just learned through them, uh, experimenting. And when I was a teacher, I used to do a lot of the adjustments for the school guitars and uh, I got you know, pretty good at it. I'm, I'm, I'm by no, mind, no means am I a luthier but I do know enough and uh, I'm confident enough to change the saddle height or the nut height I should say and adjust the relief of the neck and so on on electric guitars and classical. I hope I've given you enough examples and uh, ways that you can increase your ability to play or improve your ability to play bar chords because you do need them. Uh, once you become a bit more of a serious guitar player you cannot avoid bar chords. Mastering them or at least getting a, a better grip on how to do them well for a sustained period of time will really really uh, improve you as a guitar player. All the best and as you know let your fingers fly.